Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Ivagas Online. Today is another session of the visa interview experiences with my friends who got a chance to come to US to pursue their master's degree. So I'm here with Mona Lisa and she's going to share with us her visa interview experience in Ghana. Hello Mona Lisa, how are you? And I'm glad you were able to honor my invitation. So can you tell us more about yourself and what you're currently doing? Hi, my name is Mona Lisa. Lante. I'm from Ghana and I'm currently in Saudi Illinois University, Carbondale. I'm a first year master's student um, reading communication studies. And my interest is in to intercultural communication, organizational communication. Yeah, so that's all about me. Okay, so um, that's great. So my next question is actually going to be, what actually motivated you to apply to schools? Like, you know, there's Canada, Australia, UK. And why U.S.? Why did you decide to pursue like a master's degree in U.S.? What motivated you? Okay, so funny enough, um, I've always wanted to do my master's and do something like it's like a dream to me. So I had friends who are already here and I spoke to them because I really wanted to do my master's in communication and, and other subjects, but specifically in communication because that was my interest more and so I spoke to a couple of friends and then they were already here and then they advised that um, US would be the best place for me to do my master's course of the educational system and everything the quality education and all sorts of that and their advantages like the scholarship the funding as well so I took it upon myself that then instead of maybe looking around and then being confused of what to do then let me try and then do an application to some schools in the US. So beginning, it was kind of like uh, I had to seek help. For me, I think one thing that really helped me was I spoke to a lot of people who were already here and then they kind of assisted me with the whole process. And then that's how come I was able to, I mean, apply to so many schools. I did, I think, four schools and then I got some fundings and some I didn't get funding. And then I ended up here in Southern Illinois University, come on there. Why do you think it's necessary to apply more than, you know, one school? Like people applied to four schools for my time i applied to almost 16 schools why do you think that is really necessary can you say something about that i think basically the the whole point is you trying to gain admission and also get funding because you know in the u.s like everything is expensive like you comparing trying to afford their tuition in Ghana and then as compared to the US, I'm, I'm sure like it's very expensive and most of us cannot afford it. So you getting the funding is the most important thing that at least you are being funded and then that's why you are here. So I, for me, that's the whole point in, in applying to more schools because if I apply to let's say five schools and I get funding for each of them, I think that's, that's a, a plus for me. But what if I apply to just one school and then that school does not give me funding or I'm unable to to receive admission even that means that what i did was i mean wasted and also you, you should know that these things they are applying some of them you get waiver some of them you have to pay use your own money and then comparing and i mean comparing the city and then the us dollars yeah, paying application yeah. fee it's very expensive so it's it's stressful i know it's kind of like it involves a lot of money but for me i believe that you have to apply to maybe four to schools to get maybe choices that at least you can choose from other than just um, focusing on one school yeah thank you very much i i just want to chip in this like during my time the person that was supposed to be like my recommender it got to a point the person was actually complaining because I was bringing more schools. I was putting in more school application and it got to a point like he actually got angry. Like he was like, he was complaining that it was too much for him. So he asked me a question that, so what if all these schools like give me like admission? What am I going to do? Because supposing 10 schools give me admission, at the end of the day, I'm going to settle on one. But I just wrote like in a message form and I just sent it to him and I, I was like, um, Prof, please, getting admission in US is very easy. But yeah. what the reason we apply for a lot of schools is because we want to get funding. That is why yeah. we, we try to apply to different schools so so that our chances of getting funding can be um, expanded. You know, let me move forward to my question. So now you apply to like four schools, and how many did you get into, and how many rejections did you get? 
Okay, so I applied to four schools and I got three admissions. I mean, four admissions for all of them. So two, I had full funding for that. And then the other one, I was asked to apply for the funding later on, of which I never heard from them. And then the last school, I didn't get the funding. So like I said, for me, it was good. I applied to four schools. So out of the two that I gained funding, I had to choose between the two schools and then looking at everything, the surrounding and then people being, I mean, my interest as well. I decided to come to the school that I am in right now. Yeah. Okay. So fast forward, you got your I-20 from southern illinois mm -hmm. yes and exactly. what was the next step can you run us through that so like i said for me i i kind of like sought i mean information from other people because i had no idea about the whole process so i spoke to a couple of friends and then they mentioned that after you get your i-20 then you need to get your mrv fees that's a visa application fee and then i did buy that at gt bank then moving forward i actually and I like started with application for hunting, date hunting or so. So I, I mean, there's a website, I've forgotten the websites because it's been mm -hmm. kind of like, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I just did it because I needed something. So I, I went through the whole process. There's a format for that. I'm sure um, you're going to explain things to them when they also get. Yeah, I'm going to put the <laughs> link in the um, chat box so sure. they can. Because I can't really recall the name yeah. and everything. But then I just um, applied because I'd already bought the fees, um, bought the uh, application fee. I had to, the MRV fee, that's what I'm saying. I had to just proceed and then put in all the necessary details. And then I started looking for dates. But I think for me, beginning looking for a date was kind of like, there was no date it was in 2024 as a then like the available date was in 2024 so every time i was on the pages there, there are some pages that definitely when you get to that bridge and um, people will just send you links and then you have to join calls to get more uh, information on when data are being released and that's i kept monitoring that so i got a date and then the date was i mean good and so i had to go and then i had my intent will it be advisable to wait and pay for your service fee, which is $360, before you start applying for date, or when you buy your um, visa application, like the fee, can you use that receipt to start hunting for date, or you have to wait and get the $360 and pay for your service fee before you start hunting for date? No, I already advise that. I think the most important thing is you looking for the date because if you need to get a, um, I mean, pay for the service here and you don't have a date for your interview, it doesn't make sense. So the most important thing is that you getting your date. I mean, you buying the MRV fees, making sure that, okay, I'm looking for a date and I already have a date. And then maybe within the process, whilst if you've not actually gotten the date or you are still in the process of hunting for a date, you can just pay for the service fee, which is the $350 that you mentioned but you paying for it before i don't know how that works but i wouldn't advise anyone to do that so yeah. and when did you submit your ds-164 the one you filled before going to the interview okay so for me i think i did it a week before uh, my interview so my interview was on friday so i submitted it the friday before that week so that kind of like helped me and most people say that sometimes you have to submit like a month before but i don't just i don't believe in that i think a week is the most appropriate or some people even do it three days to the time yeah, 48 but hours I, before the time 40 years but for me i did it just a week so that's it yeah. you filled your ds-160 form you bought your um, visa application like you paid for your visa application and yeah. you also paid for your service fee now you mm -hmm. had a week to go for your interview now let's mm -hmm. bring it down to like a day so the night before your interview can you please share with us how the feeling was like <laughs> I, I, I must say it's 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 terrifying for me because you know even though people say that I mean you traveling to the US like you traveling or getting a chance to travel it's not really a big deal I mean you can make it wherever you want to make it but it's kind of like frustrating and if you have like opportunity to study in a country that you've always dreamt of and then you even have funding on top of that and then you going to the embassy and then they tell you no you're not getting a visa it's really frustrating and painful and exhausting so that evening i mean I, and my parents it was it was hell for me i couldn't even see like it was so frustrating <laughs> and i have friends who had already gone and they're like oh it's it's not i mean it's it's easy and all that i mean the fact that they are saying it and you experiencing it is different so mm -hmm. it was it was it was it was 
it was a bit of help, but I mean, it all with it. And I know by that time you've had like a lot of stories and experiences from people who have gone yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, because even the pages, like I said, when you get to that point, you definitely cross it. People, it's, people come out and then you see how their experiences were, and then everyone has different like experiences. So you don't really know how yours is gonna be. Like, are you gonna get the same thing? And you can't say you're gonna stick to uh, maybe this particular style because if you do that, maybe it might affect you. So it was kind of like you know you're torn between. You, I mean you you'll be in a dilemma like because you don't know what to do you'll be anxious like i was anxious and uh, two hours that, that night till the next morning so i was like i got to the place and then i received like oh congratulations your business has been approved no, like, that's, we, like, the we, most we, we'll get there approved. but before we get there um there are you know people that believe that let's say if you get admission and you don't get funding it's not advisable to go for your visa interview because Pay statistics or pay certain uh, information that people have been able to gather in Ghana when you are going to the US embassy in um, cantonment. When you have funding, like full funding, or even you have deficit, which is really not that much, the chances of you getting your visa approved is really high as compared to someone who doesn't have funding or who is having, let's say, partial funding. Uh, what, what can you say about that? Um, I would say, I don't really know this kind of, I mean, I don't really have much information about it, but for me, the, the experience I had, um, during my interview, I mean, the guy before me kind of like didn't have funding and then the person was rejected. I don't know how, but I also have friends who, I mean, I came here and I met them and then they also didn't have funding at all. And then they got approved from the same embassy in Ghana. So I don't know how I can advise anyone on that, but I would say that just do everything possible to get funding if you have to. But if you have a deficit, I mean, people have, I know of deficit issues where people have like, huge deficits but then they're able to sell through i think it's all on what you want to say how do you say it and then maybe like you having the rights i mean documents like if a financial documents that supports the uh, i mean everything that you're saying so i think with the deficit issue i think it's all about your confidence and then you having the right information as well as the right documents to support whatever you're saying but for not having funding at all i can't really tell because i know people who went and they went through for them and i know people who also went and didn't go through for them yeah 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 that's that's very true so i will make a video Video on how a friend of mine got his visa approved with fifty-two thousand dollars deficit. He basically had no funding, but he got approved into such a high university, Ivy League school. You know, so like you said, I really like what you said that it actually depends on your story and how convincing you are going to sound. Now, Lisa, uh, you went for your visa interview. You went to the embassy for the very first time. How was um, the U.S. embassy? in cantonment like and was there tension like how was the place like uh, with the embassy i i mean <laughs> that was the first time i was actually seeing the place I, I have seen the building so many times but i didn't know how the experience was until i got closer to it and it's very scary not scary in a bad way but i mean you could see the tension everywhere like everywhere was so tense people were tense and we were so many a lot of people as at the time my interview was around 7 30 and but people were already there as at 5 30 a.m and then funny enough it was also raining but then hey everybody's some people were standing in the rain and, and they didn't care all they just wanted to do was i mean get being approved so it was very tensious like the place was so packed and then also um people were coming around saying all sorts of things you could see people who were approved and then you know you could see the smiles on their faces and then people who were not i mean they were in between you don't know if they got approved or not and people who looked very down because they were also approved and um, denied actually so I, I must say it was very i mean like i don't know how to say the word but it's it's frustrating for me i think me the whole thing is frustrating for me yeah. i think that's what is the word i keep using all the time because it's i mean how i deal with my i mean whenever i'm, I'm tense or stressed is different from everyone else so for me whenever th those things start happening to me i tend to feel frustrated so it's i don't know but it's overwhelming so that's what you 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 went to do all your check in like security yeah. checks so i did everything yeah so i had to go through the process i mean when you begin there are 
steps. A lot of process you have to go through. There are places where they check your DS-160 and then they take you through some screening and then you sit and then you go to some place in the room. I mean, the room closer to the videos, the counselors or yeah. whatever it's called. And that's where they take your pictures and something like that. I don't know. I can't really record the whole process. And then you join the queue. And that's where in the queue you can hear people. I mean, you can hear someone being say, you have congratulations. And then you can hear some people, sorry, I cannot approve your visa. And then you just standing in the queue and then hearing these things and seeing people with their passports, people mm -hmm. without their passport because they have been approved. I mean, it's, it's, it's something else. Yeah. So when you were in the line, like in a queue, and it was your turn or your time to be interviewed or whom did you like get a chance to interview you was it the indian woman the black american or the white lady and how was it like the moment you found yourself like in front of this person and what were the documents that the person asked you for and what was the first question i've asked you a lot of questions but i know you'll be able to compile all of them yeah <laughs> i get it <laughs> so for me like i said uh, the guy in front of me was without funding and then he was denied so moving on it was very scary i mean i was like god you cannot do this to me i mean not here i mean for me i was praying all throughout the time and then i got to her and then the first thing she asked i mean she woke up oh. i got an indian lady okay and yes and first counter was, Yes, yeah, the first counter, yeah. And then she welcomed me very nicely. So I was like, oh, that's good. And then the first thing she asked was, um, why am I, uh, what course am I reading? I mean, what course am I going to read? What were the documents she actually asked you for? Okay, so the first document she asked me was, um, I should pass my passport and then my I-20. Okay. Yes. And then I passed it to her and then she asked that, what program was I going to read? So for me, it was a different encounter and that's advice is what I keep giving people because we've all had like, whenever you're going through this process, people will tell you, we have like people who, uh, who are more trained and they're not like trained, but then they have like experience and they guide you on what to say. I mean, pertaining to your story is the same thing though, but just that you have a storyline that you have to put in. And so with that kind of question, and where what I've been taught is that you say it and then you add maybe why you come back, that's tied into your home, home tie. Home yeah. 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 That's what basically it is no, no matter the question that has been asked. But funny enough for my case, and um, when I told her that and I was adding up to the home time, she was like, Hey, I didn't I didn't ask you for more than that. Is it are you telling are you I mean reading to me or you're trying to like is it like something that you practiced? So at that point it was really scary because mm. I realized that lady didn't want more than that. She just asked me what program I was going to read. So I should have said, oh, communication studies and that's it. Wait, so wait, Mona, I, I seems your story is really getting interesting. So yeah. because when I was also preparing, like, you know, at times you even hear people trying to tell you, even if they ask, what is your name? You'll be like, my name is Evans a Japan, and I'm going to US to pursue a master's of art degree in this yes. program. And after this program, I'll come back to Ghana. That means at times it, it's really not necessary to be adding all those things. At times you just have to go straight to the point and answer specific questions that they are going to ask you. Is that what you're trying to say? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, it's maybe based on the person, I mean, the person who is asking you the question yeah. too. Because for moving forward, the next question she asked me was, um, I should pass my, I mean, funding letter to her. And then she went through. And then the next thing she was like, am I traveling alone? So you could see that maybe she just didn't want a long talk. So it's not now that I come to see so many things to her because maybe you would have bought her. But funny enough, I mean, unfortunately for me, yeah, she didn't get bored when I, I mean, I kept going on with the first one. She just told me that it looked like as if I was saying something that I did, she didn't want. So yeah. she just asked me and that's what she wanted to hear. And then, then the follow-up question was the funding letter. And then she asked if I was traveling and all of which I said, yes. So I think basically it's, it's, you, sh you shouldn't just, I mean, follow the flow like all the time. Just when you get there, just relax and then pay the question she asks you or him, he or she asks you. And then you go with it because you might go, go and say something that may, I mean, trigger them and everything and then it might not turn out well. So yeah. if there's one thing I'm learning from you, be specific enough mm -hmm. or be specific as, yes. as, as possible. Like, don't yes. try yes. to beat around oh, the bush. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So... Take this white paper, your visa has been approved. How was the feeling like when you got out of the embassy? <laughs> I mean, for me, I mean, like I said, so before I was actually, the first question she asked me that she was like, the thing she mentioned that I was going beyond the thing she was asking of the, I mean, the question she asked of 
point i didn't know what was happening but i was so scared so when i got the information that the list has been approved i mean i didn't want to i mean scream and shout because i had to i mean keep keep quiet and then go out but i couldn't contain it even get it closer to the the exit of the building and then i i kind of like just busted out and all of them i mean all the people that were there are like congratulations because it was i mean i didn't know how the feeling was a, a, a moment earlier on and then coming out and then i'm seeing that i've been approved so okay yeah. so um i didn't ask you this question like earlier did, did you have like deficit and did any question about how you are going to pay for the deficit like your sponsor did it come up in your interview yes so i had a deficit of two thousand dollars but she didn't ask me of that she didn't so, ask did you go with a yes, bank statement I had, yes i did have a bank statement she, did, she didn't ask she did. Yes. Wow, amazing. And when you were going, like, did you have money on you? Because I know normally when you get your visa approved and you get out, at times you will be compelled to just dash people money <laughs> because you're happy. Oh, no. I mean, no, not in my case. I did have money, though. But, I mean, I was just excited and I just had to. I mean, when I got out, I came with my brother, so I just hugged him. And then, I mean, I was excited and I just went home. So. You feel like working or you wanted to fly? No, <laughs> I mean the film is the film is amazing. It's beautiful. It's it's something else because you know you're going to like the United States of America, mm -hmm. so it's. It's, it's a big feeling. I mean, okay. Nice, but I mean, it was okay. It was okay. Thank you very much, Mona Lisa, for sharing your visa interview experience sure. with us. And uh, sure. I'll ask you my final question: What would be that one advice that you give to any prospective student or any potential student who is at the stage of maybe waiting for decisions from various schools that he or she applied to? Maybe someone also has the i20 readily available and is hunting for date what is that one advice you're going to give people back home that are actually watching this video and are also in anticipation of applying for a date in ghana i think basically one thing i'll say is that i'm trying to inquire more from people because that's what one thing that really helped me in anything i mean this is new to us and then people have been there and then they've seen the process they've gone through the process so they can give you more information but not just rely on only one source so i think for me that one advice i can give anyone who is waiting for a decision from a squeezer just be hopeful just pray and then let's see where it goes and now when you get the admission and you start the whole process try and then inquire from a lot of people trying to ask questions people that you know that they've been through the process so they can give you i mean the right information for you to go through the process and then definitely with god with your perseverance with doing the right thing mm. and you should be able to come to the us the next year to a video on why people apply to other states and the consequences yeah. and the replications in that and also i'll try and bring some people on board who applied in other neighboring countries and how it actually um went for them so thank you very much mona lisa once again for um spending some time with me i'll connect with you um some other time uh, have a nice day bye all right bye